Hello and welcome to the Slackware ARM vlog. I'm Stuart Winter, the platform architect and lead developer for Slackware Linux on the ARM platform. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to manage the lifecycle of the bootloader firmware for hardware models that use the RK3399 system on chip, which for Slackware ARCH64 at the moment is the Rock Pro 64 and the Pinebook Pro. We used to only be able to do this from within the installer, but now because we needed to do some work for the Honeycomb um, to support the Honeycomb hardware model, I've now separated this out into a package that is part of the operating system that now allows you to manage the upgrade process from within the operating system directly. So it's easier than it used to be. So let's have a look at it now. So the first port of call is to visit the Slackware ARM website because from there we can find the installation guides. So click on the installation guides here on the left hand side. This will take you to the installation guides landing page. At the moment we don't have a stable release of Slackware ARCH64 um, but when we do it should be version 15.1. Until then we'll use the current branch. So by the time you come to uh, look at this video you'll probably you'll probably find a, a released version there. Next we pick the installation guide for the uh, either the Rock Pro 64 or the Pinebook Pro depending of course on, on which one you actually have. I'll pick the Rock Pro 64. As it happens the instructions are identical so actually doesn't matter in this instance. What I also may do in the future is move some of this management information out of the installation guide into separate sections but for the time being I just want to keep everything together because it's just easier. If you look on the right hand side at the bottom here you'll see it says managing the bootloader so let's click on that and this takes you to the relevant section. As you can see there isn't a huge amount in fact most of it's just screenshots. The way that we've implemented this in Slackware is through a package called hwm-bw-rk3399 and this lives within the A series. That's just the name of the package series or package um, group, if you want to call it that. We call them package series in Slackware. So this is a new package. If you haven't already installed this package, you need to do so. And the easiest way to do it is using Slack PKG. If you haven't used Slack PKG before, there are instructions about how to use it within this document, but I'm not going to cover that here. As root, you run the bootloader flash RK3399 tool and it will run you through the workflow. It's pretty straightforward really. If there's an update available it tells you so and suggests that you flash it. If there isn't it says you don't need to flash it but you can, but you can if you wish. Um, the only other thing worth noting is that if you have a non-slackware release of the bootloader in your SPI flash, it will tell you that it's unknown. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work, it just means that it's not a Slackware version. Although ordinarily you should never see that because if you've installed Slackware, you should have installed the Slackware version of U-Boot. But it's just um, just to point out in case it's ever it's ever corrupted or perhaps you're using more than one version of you know a Linux distribution now, I don't know. Anyway, but ordinarily in most cases it should just tell you, hey, there's an upgrade, you should upgrade it or there isn't and you don't need to upgrade it. Pretty straightforward and then it walks you through the upgrade process and finally tells you it's complete. Let's have a look at the tool in action. Now when you looked at the install guys you'll see that you run the tool directly as root. Now I'm already root uh, here. You, oh. Yeah so you can see I'm already root here so I don't need to change to root but ordinarily you'll be your plebeian user and you'll use su dash or perhaps you log in as root directly I don't know anyway I'm already root so that part's complete so again in the install guide it says that you can run the the tool directly but I'm just going to show you also running it through package tool in case you haven't seen this before and if you click on setup like this you can find it in here so you'll see on the right hand side it says the RK3399 bootloader flashing tool and you simply press spacebar to select it and then press enter to run it and you'll see the tool running now. Okay so you'll see on this particular machine it is a Rock Pro 64 and the version of U-Boot installed is the latest version that we ship in Slackware and so the tool tells you you don't need to flash anything. If you want to flash it then you can just 
select yes and then you'll run through the process but i don't need to so i don't i'm not going to on this particular machine so we'll we'll, we'll say no and in this instance it returns us to package tool and we can just exit package tool let me show you now on bladsweed and we'll follow the instructions so we'll run in this instance i forgot to actually install the package <laughs> so uh, this is one of my development machines and i've been messing around with it so in my case, I haven't used Slack PKG or Slack package uh, to install it because I've got the Slackware Arch64 tree locally on this machine. So I just installed it directly from there. As you can see, this is the, uh, the package here, uh, HWM BWRK3399, and there's some information about it here. So this package is now installed and I should find I've got my bootloader flash tool here. So let's run it directly. Okay. And here you'll see, again, it's a Rock Pro 64. And the version of U-Boot that I had, you'll see it's the same version of U-Boot, but the build is different. So the date that it was built is different. And this is because we haven't upgraded the version of U-Boot recently, but we have applied a few patches to it. We're in 2023 now. There is a much newer version of U-Boot uh, available, but the reason why we continue using this older version is because in this particular case we used the Manjaro Linux distribution as a reference for this stuff because that's what's used by the Pine64 company and looking at the forums there it turns out that this is the version of U-Boot that works the best on Rock Pro 64 and the Pinebook Pro and so we do the same we use that version we apply the patches that they also apply because that way we get the best that you know, exists in, in a community, you know, that's tested in the wild and we bring that into Slackware. So that, that's why the version of U-Boot is older, but it's the build number or rather the date that is different. Okay, so do we want to flash it? Yes, we will flash it. So we press enter on here and it tells you that the machine must remain powered up during the process. If actually it does break, you do have a problem here, you can always uh, revisit the installation guide for Slackware and install the recovery or initialization firmware as it's called. So if you look at the start of the, the installation guide, you'll see that it talks about you need to deploy this small um, image to an SD card and boot it. So if it does all go wrong, you can always reflash the SPI using the recovery image. Um, but in this case, everything's going to be fine. My Rock Pro 64 is plugged into a UPS. So even if we had a power outage, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, so, and I'll just take this time as well to say thank you again to all of you who've donated to the project financially because it really does help. It pays for the, for the electricity, it pays for buying new hardware, replacement hardware, and it also keeps me in beer money as well, so that's always good. Okay, so it's just writing the data, the new firmware, and it was successful, perfect. So that is complete. And finally, I'll just show you on Wizbit. Wizbit is the Pinebook Pro. So it's the same, everything is the same. Okay, and you can see here that it's a Pinebook Pro listed in the hardware model, but I already have the latest version of this, so there's nothing to flash. Now, what we're gonna do now is I'm just going to reboot Bladsweed. So what I'm showing you here now is Bladsweed rebooting. So you'll see that Hopefully at the top here, you'll see this version of U-Boot is the same version. Well, actually, you'll see it booting. The build date is the same, but you'll see it, you'll see the Slackware identity appear in a moment. Here we go. So you'll see this is the version of U-Boot here. This is the one we've just flashed that was from August 25th. And, and you've got the Slackware ID here. So this confirms that this version of this Rock Pro 64 is now running the latest version of the Slackware build of U-Boot. And it's now gonna boot. What we're looking at here is over the serial port. So I have my build machines um, permanently connected to a serial cable on, on a different machine. So I can, you know, I can manage them all remotely and reinstall them and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that was it. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process, easy to do. The instructions are on the are currently in the installation guide. If I ever move them out, you'll easily be able to find them, so don't worry about it. And again, thank you for all your support, and I hope this is useful to you. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.